Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. This is a video podcast all about mostly knitting and any other crafty business that I'm getting up to. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. Uh, welcome, I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome and thank you so much for taking some time to spend with me. And if you are a returning viewer, it's wonderful to see you again. It is a dreary, very low motivation Saturday afternoon here in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm from and where I live. I don't think the sun has shown its face all day, which is very unusual for us around here. It's cold and it's dreary and I don't want to do anything. This is like the 700th take of this podcast because I just feel in like a, I don't know, I'm feeling really nervous about videoing today. I don't know what it is, but it's one of those things that if I don't do it now, it'll just drag on forever. Um, I was going to film an episode last week but because I had some time last weekend, but I had a cold and even though I felt fine, I sounded like a drain pipe. And so I thought I would spare you that. You're welcome. Um, but I'm here. If, the, if you're seeing this, we have a successful take. Um, I'm not, not confident, but we're going to give it a red hot go. I've been procrastinating this literally all day. Um, so it's finally... I'm now, I think, at a race with the light, so welcome to my podcast. <laughs> Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a ripper episode, and that was a very loud clap. Um, so as I said, I'm trying to make it like nice and cozy, winter warmth. It's been a pretty chilly day, but I've got, got my candle burning. I've got myself a nice little red wine because I've had too many cups of tea today and so I'm feeling a bit, maybe that's why I'm feeling a bit off. I've just been like drinking tea non-stop all day. Um, I don't know. So pour yourself a drink, get out your knitting. It's, <laughs> it's all happening. So yeah, let me start with what I'm wearing. So before we get to the exciting finished object what I'm wearing, which eagle-eyed returning viewers will recognize. Um, I do have some two pairs of hand-knit socks on. You know it's cold. I've got this pair of two-by-two two rib socks in Coop Knits Socksier yarn, just an improvised vanilla two-by-two two rib sock that I made. Um, and then on the end of my feet, I've got these amazing simple house slippers, which is an old pattern from Temple of Knit that used to be on her blog, RIP. I loved that blog, um, but she's taken the blog down because she's just not posting on it anymore. But she is making this pattern available for free on Ravelry. Um, I'm not sure if she's done that yet, but she is in the process of doing it if she hasn't already. But I'll have the link to my Ravelry project page and all the Ravelry project pages and any other nonsense I talk about today in the description box right below. So my feet are super warm and my top half is super warm as well because I have my amazing what I'm wearing slash finished object slash maybe favorite hand knit item of all time perhaps. It's a bold statement but I am obsessed with my white horse. So this is the White Horse Sweater Pattern by Caitlin Hunter, and I'll just stand up. I even practiced this before I filmed to make sure I could get a good, good angle. Oh my goodness, all the crows are going bananas outside at the moment. Kind of feels a bit apocalyptic, um, <laughs> but focus, White Horse. So this is the beautiful White Horse Sweater. Um, by Caitlin Hunter, as I said, I knit the size large and I knit it kind of exactly, exactly a pattern. I didn't make any modifications. I did have to go up a needle size, but, um, returning viewers will know I'm quite a tight knitter. So that's not unusual for me. I think I knit most of it on a, on a 4.5 millimeter needle and then the ribbing on a 3.75 millimeter needle. Um, yeah, but the length, the stitches, exactly as written in the pattern, which is amazing. Um, I didn't have to think, I could just knit. And it was seriously a pleasure to knit 
from start to finish. The lace was really fine and interesting. I really love a good bobble, love a bit of a lace motif and it was super fun. And then once you were done with that, the, the yoke comes down far enough that the stockinette sections just went by super duper quickly. So it was a quick knit, it was a fun knit, I love it. I think I've worn it almost every day since I finished it. And yeah, I can't think of any more positive things to say about it, but I just absolutely love it. My other favorite thing, so many favorite things, my other favorite thing about it is that the um, there is some short row shaping in the back, um, but it's in the rib section before you start the pattern, which means that when you pick it up, it's really easy to tell the front from the back. You don't have to kind of line up the hems and guess, um, as I do with a few of my other jumpers, um, especially ones that have quite a high neck. It can be quite hard to tell the front from the back, but just a couple of extra rows of ribbing make it really obvious. So it feel and it feels like the right way around. Like when it's the right way around, it really feels like the right way around. Um, which when you make stuff and don't sew labels into it is sometimes a bit of a guess. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Um, the yarn that I used is also amazing and beautiful. It is actually a really similar colour to the um, sample that Caitlin Hunter made. Maybe a slightly lighter, slightly cooler grey than her one, but it's very similar. Very similar to the prototype. Is that the right word? sample. Anyway, but it is not the same yarn. This is um, Adagio Mills Alpaca, which is a alpaca farm slash mill in Orange in New South Wales, which is the state below my state. And it's 100% Australian alpaca. It is not dyed, so this is just colours made by blending the natural colors of alpaca. This is the shade Sonata, which is like a light medium gray, which is really lovely. Um, even though it is kind of not a like standard, like dyed yarn that you can guarantee will be the same color. I didn't alternate skeins and you cannot tell. They are, they are all from the same batch, but the color is really, really consistent across all the skeins from the batch. And it's just absolutely gorgeous yarn. It's so soft, um, but still like feels nice and wooly. Um, some alpaca can be quite slippy, but this is still really nice and feels like has really good like weight and grip to it. I absolutely love um, Adagio Mills yarn, one of my favorites. And yeah, I'm super happy. It just worked perfectly with this pattern. It's such a good project. If you haven't made a white horse, it is, great go go make one stop watching this podcast and go cast one on um it's an eight ply yarn project um i used about nine 50 gram skeins for this and it was yeah i love it i love it i love it i love it it's like so good go knit one i don't have any other more positive things to say about it but it's yeah really awesome and i love it so now let's sit back down properly again um yeah, how are you? Um, I feel like I've been talking a mile a minute, but this is definitely, definitely the best take so far of the podcast. So, oh, I have yarn in my wine. Oh, well, there's little bits of yarn fuzz in there. So, let's get on to works in progress. So, where will I start? Um, oh. Give me a second to get the yarn out of my nose. I'll start with the least interesting work in progress. You saw this last time and it doesn't look like significantly different to last time you saw it. I've done about four or five more pattern repeats since you last saw it, but it kind of looks exactly the same. It is my Void Shawl by Melanie Berg in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the beautiful Yellowstone colorway. That's kind of color accurate. Um, but yeah, it's quite a long but not super deep shawl, so as you do more pattern repeats it kind of adds more length this way than it does depth, so it just kind of feels like a bit of a slog to get through this part 
to be honest. The pattern is really cool. I love the effect of these little triangles. Um, but I think I'm realizing that I love having shawls. Like the shawls that I have, I wear all the time. And looking at this, I just wish I had it finished so I could wear it. But the actual like process of knitting them is a bit of a trial, is a bit of an exaggeration. But it's a bit of a trial. <laughs> I don't love knitting on it. I have really low motivation to actually knit on it. I just kind of want it to be done. And I'm getting there. I'm really getting there. By getting there, I'm not even halfway through. And the only way I can really judge how far through I am is by how much yarn I've used. And I'm only onto this, like, I'm only like a little bit into the second skein of five skeins. So I may be knitting this forever, but I think I'm going to have to start, like, making little deadlines for myself by how much I want to have done by a certain time otherwise this would just be a forever work in progress but that's my void shawl which I just wish that I could be like Molly Weasley and just magic my knitting needles to be sitting off in the corner knitting this for me usually I'm more of a process knitter like it's the actual knitting of the thing that I enjoy like I want the finished object but I don't mind if it takes a while because I just I like knitting what a surprise, I like, just like knitting. But this, I just want the finished object. So if anyone has a hookup for Magic Molly Weasley knitting needles, uh, feel free to comment down below. Um, my next work in progress, which is this one that's sitting in this big messy pile here, is I don't think I'd actually cast this on, no, I hadn't cast this on um, last episode, but I have made like quite a significant progress on my Flaum cardigan. This is a pattern by Justina Lokowska or it's Letters Knits on Instagram. She has lots of beautiful patterns but this one is from Amirisu magazine, the same issue of Amirisu as the Void Shawl that I want to knit every single pattern from. It's such a beautiful issue um, but this is the fla very popular, very beautiful Flaum cardigan. It is in regular rib and two by two rib, not two by two, regular rib and fisherman's rib to make this gorgeous squishy texture. Isn't that, it's just so gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I'm almost at the bit where you put the pockets in. So I'm kind of on the, getting towards the home stretch almost of the body. It's not super long. Um, and it is kind of longer in the back than it is in the front. You use kind of short rows as you go to make the back longer than the front. And the construction is really interesting. It's kind of, when you start, you don't, can't quite get your head around how it's going to turn into a garment, but it does. And it's almost seamless. And yeah, it's just really fun to knit. The Fisherman's Rib is super satisfying and it just feels so good. Like, I wish this was, I could pass this through the screen so you could have a squish because it just feels so good, which is partly the texture of the fisherman's rib and also partly this amazing yarn. So I'm knitting this out of Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills um, La Bella, which is a 50-50 merino alpaca blend. Um, the yarn that the original sample for this pattern was made in is Quince & Company Owl, which is also a 50-50 merino alpaca blend, so this yarn has a very similar effect. Um, but yeah, it is, I wanted to knit something out of this yarn for the longest time, because I saw it on the internet and I've seen people's projects on the internet also, um, and it's just so beautiful. So it is undyed alpaca and merino and it's this cute gorgeous mild gray so it's really dark gray and white spun together um, I think the dark gray is the alpaca and the white is the merino but that's just me guessing um, that could be incorrect but it is so beautiful and it's honestly some of the like softest squishiest yarn I've ever worked with it's really bouncy it just like it feels like a cloud and a hug all in one and yeah and then that in combination with the thickness of the fisherman's rib is just like next level soft 
it's going to be so cozy. I ca cannot wait to have it finished. Now it is a kind of minimally processed, minimally everything yarn. So if you don't like picking a crap load of grass out of your yarn, it may not be for you. Um, I hand wind all my balls of yarn and I have always have a nice little handful of grass at the end of each skein of this, um, which is just virtue of the fact that it's a minimally processed, natural, undyed yarn. It's just part and parcel of that kind of yarn. Um, but if that's so, it's not something I mind at all. But if it's something that bothers you or if you have like some like grass allergies and things like that, it might be something to keep in mind. Um, and the other thing is like from skein to skein, I got all mine from the same, they're from the same batch, the same lot. There is one skein that I have a feeling is either like a different shade or just like a different batch because it is like significantly lighter. But I've alternated skeins, which I hate doing. I loved that I didn't have to alternate skeins on my white horse. Even though on the um, Adagio Mills website it does say to alternate skeins, you don't need to if you got them from the same batch. You really don't. I mean, uh, I don't know though. Don't hold me to it. Um, but I've never had to. They've always been really consistent. Um, and I've, I have knit with a mild yarn from Reddish and Road Woolen Mills before for the body of my weekends are, and that was a black and white mild yarn. I didn't have to alternate skeins with that, I think, because it was like black and black and white. What can happen to black and white? This one is a bit more inconsistent. As you can see, there are some spots where if you were super bothered by things like this, you might have a bit of a complex about. I'm gonna be, they are actually slightly more obvious on camera than they are in real life, but especially kind of here, you can see, gets a little stripey. I mean, it doesn't bother me. It's a design feature, but it's not, it's not something that's going to, I looked at it and thought, if Eleanor, if this is going to bother you, just pick it out now. But I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to leave it. Um, because that's just kind of the nature of using these kind of mild colors is that you do have inconsistencies and bits, but overall, the overall effect is just a beautiful gray. And also the fisherman's rib section really like masks the, like how the fisherman's rib stitch works really kind of hides the inconsistencies really well. Um, the one thing that did, I think if you were the kind of person to get bothered by this thing would have really pissed you off. Um, this section of about 20 centimeters that I found in the middle of one of the skeins and it was pretty cheeky because it was right in the middle. So you didn't know until you were kind of winding it that this was going to happen. But this little section for about 20 centimeters, one of it's a three ply iron weight yarn, and one of the plies is just like not spun at all. It's just straight roving. And you can see the gray. It's really pretty because you can see like the gray and both the gray and the white. So it's the alpaca and the merino. And there's the two plies that have been spun, and then this one that like is just not spun. And I looked at it and I was like, there are some like little blips. You can see kind of the little white bits here where maybe it's not spun quite as tightly as the rest of it, but that's kind of part of part and parcel of this kind of yarn. But this, there was no way that, that I could hide this like really thick chunk, just sneak it into the fisherman's rib and no one would notice. Like I just had to cut it out and splice it together. And because of the, it's not spun super tightly, so it's really easy to splice back together, but I just cut it out and kept going but I thought if you're the kind of person that some people just really like things to be consistent and if that's the kind of thing that's going to bother you that would have really really annoyed you but I kept it to show on the podcast and now I'm going to I don't know feed, give it to a mouse to make into a nest or something I don't know what I'm going to do with it but <laughs> just bury it in the garden it's biodegradable um yeah um that's a non sequitur that's really hard to link to, but I'm really, really loving knitting this. The Fisherman's Rib is just really fun to, really fun to knit. It's so cozy of an evening to sit with this kind of sitting over you because it's really nice and warm. It's like a little blanket. Um, yeah, there's a reason it's such a popular pattern. It's really great. It's really cool. And that is the flower. 
so hopefully by next episode, because I'm, I'm kind of flying through it, because um, it's on quite big needles, so who knows how much I'll have done by the next time we talk. So, yes. <sighs> segue. I do have two more projects to talk about. Um, that was a great segue. Thanks. Um, let's start with the socks that I'm knitting at the moment. I have shown you these before, and usually I won't show a sock until it's at kind of a memorable, worthwhile point to show, um, or I have one finished. But this is, you have seen this yarn before, um, and this sock project. Um, this is Sweet Sparrow Yarns in the There's Coffee in That Nebula colorway, which is this amazing striping brown and then glittery purple stripes. It's a Stellina base, so it sparkles. It's a good old Star Trek joke, which is very fun, and I love it. I think it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, just such a unique, beautiful yarn. And um, so I have put the heel into this sock yesterday, and it is a new-to-me heel method. Uh, so it's my first ever afterthought heel. Um, it's not one of those more, like, cutty ones. I'm not quite up to that yet, <laughs> um, but this one, you, it's one where you put in waste yarn and then pull it out later and then put the heel in. Um, usually you might like wait for longer, like I haven't done a huge amount of the foot, but I couldn't find this yarn and then I found it. So I really wanted to put this heel in right away. Um, you may recognize this yarn if you are a returning viewer from my hipster hat. It is Retrosaria Mondeme in, I think it's color 106, but it's the really hot fuchsia pink color. Um, the hipster hat only took 39 grams out of a 100 gram skein, so I have a bunch left over and I think I'm going to use it for really fun contrasting heels because I have a few self-striping colorways that I think will look really nice with these cool pink heels. So I put this heel in yesterday. Um, the tutorial that I used for the Afterthought heel is the from the Smooth Operator Sock Pattern by Susan B. Anderson, um, which is a really great, um, it's got really clear photos and it explains everything really well if you've never done an Afterthought heel like I hadn't. So it made it really easy and that's my little heel. Um, I just, I'm not super motivated to work on socks at the moment. This is just the project that usually lives in my handbag. So when I'm out and about on the way to work, things like that, I can work on it. I don't have a super long commute, so I don't get a lot of knitting time there. And it's just, I just don't, when I'm at home, want to work on a sock at the moment. So these are going very slowly. You know, I think it's probably about three episodes ago that I showed you the first half of this. Um, so I'm probably going to be working on this sock for a long time, but they're real cute and it's really fun to learn something new. Um, that's the great thing about knitting. There's always, always something new to learn, always a new technique, a new way of doing things, a new way to see if you like it. And I don't know if I like Afterthought Heels. This is my first go, but I will let you know once I have finished it and worn them and done all of that. But yeah, that is my little sock project. I do have one more project that I've just cast on this week. Um, even though I have a bunch of projects that I'm already working on and really want to finish, who doesn't want to do and <laughs> cast on something else? This is a um, Roku hat by Olga, Olga Jazzy Knits. What's her last name? She has like a hyphenated last name, but it's Olga Jazzy Knits on Instagram. Um, and I've knit this, this is the third time I'm knitting this pattern. I've made one for my dad and one for myself. And this is one for a friend of mine. I was talking to him on the phone this past week and where he lives and works is really cold. And I thought, I want to make you a hat. Um, one of my favorite ways to take care of my friends and show them that I love them is by making them hats. Especially people, my friends, quite a few of my friends live kind of far away and in places that are a lot colder than here. So I like the thought that I'm keeping them warm even if it's from afar. So I'm knitting the largest size of the Roku hat on the recommended needle size, which is a four millimeter needle. Every project apart from those socks, I'm using the needles from my Licker Interchangeable set. 
love them. They're my favorite needles. They're really great. Um, but yeah, so I'm knitting the largest size of the Roku hat, which is just a really good basic hat pattern. But there's two things about this project that are really great. Firstly, I think I've done the best tubular cast on of my life. Like, I don't know if it's, is it coming up because it's so dark? Like, can you see? Can you see how good that is? Like, is this making sense? But yeah, I actually we keep stopping knitting and looking at it because it is like the neatest, smoothest, most cohesive tubular cast on I've ever done. So congratulations to me. And uh, this yarn is from my stash. It is the same yarn I used to make my quadri hat. It is from F the Fiber Smith yarn shop in Melbourne. It's their hand dyed yarn in the colorway depths. I'm not sure if Leslie dyes this color anymore. I haven't seen it on their website for a while. It was one of their early colorways, but it's really gorgeous. It's this dark gray um, that has bits of like lighter gray and brown and little blips of really dark gray as well. So you can see there's some little spots. It's a good section. Oh, there's a good section just there. We can really see the variation in the colorway i think the sun is almost gone so the lighting is getting a bit interesting but yeah that's a pretty good and you can see the tubular casting really well from there as well yes so um i am at the moment alternating skeins and that when i was making my quadri hat i got about just over halfway through it and i thought i was going to run out of yarn so i because I, I did buy two skeins of this. Um, it is her hand-dyed Aran Waite Merino. Um, and I did get two skeins of it. And when I was about halfway through my quadri, I thought I was going to run out. And so I got into the second one and started alternating. And um, I wouldn't have... It turns out I wouldn't have needed to. I probably... I would have been fine. Um, but yeah, it meant I had enough for a second hat. And because my friend works out in the countryside doing outdoorsy things um, I think this will be a really good and practical color for him and yeah it's going really well so I'm alternating skeins and I'm also trying another new method I'm doing um, the helical knitting method that kind of blew up at the start of this year um, for alternating skeins in the round um, I'll link to the tutorial below from Babbles Traveling Yarns um, and, but it's really, it's so easy and you don't get a seam and you don't really have to think or twist anything. And yeah, it's really, it's really, really great. So yeah, highly recommend. It's super easy, really easy to get the hang of. And yeah, it's making for a really nice, really nice little hat. So it's way too big for me at least. Like the rib isn't even stretched out when it's on my head. But my friend is much taller and has a much bigger head than me, so it's going to be perfect. Um, yeah, as I said, I've made this pattern a bunch of times before. If you're looking for a really great fitting ribbed hat pattern with really nice crown decreases, this is definitely the guy for you. So that is all of the knitting content for today. Um, I don't really have... I'm really focused on everything that I'm working on at the moment, so I don't really have any upcoming projects to talk about. Um, what else has been happening? It's just been really kind of busy, kind of a gross month with just, you know, one of those times where there's lots of not very nice things happening, but that's life. Um, I am at the moment reading a really good short story collection. I'll show you that. So I'm reading... Homesick for Another World by Ot uh, Otessa Moshveg, who is the author of Eileen, which was, oh, I think that was my bookmark. Luckily, it's a short story collection. Um, Eileen, which was shortlisted for the Man Booker two or three years ago, and um, My Year of Rest and Relaxation, which came out last year, which is very popular and is really good. I love her writing style. I love everything about her. I think she's amazing. And this is a really great short story collection. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm reading at the moment. Um, I'm listening to a terrible podcast. So I started listening to um, 
Death in Ice Valley. It's a BBC World Service um, co-production between Britain and Norway. Um, it, came, it was The reason I started listening to it is because it was really highly recommended. Lots of people were saying how great it was. It sounded right up my alley. I love a good cold case, love a good crime podcast, love a good mystery, love spies, like all of that crap. I love it. But this podcast is just so much drama for nothing. Um, the production is just like hilariously over the top. Um, and spoiler alert, they don't find anything. Like there's no, they build up like there's this new information and new stuff and it's all really mundane. I think like this lady just died and they don't know who she is. And there's a bunch of speculation with not really much behind it. And I'm now just kind of listening to it. I'm on the last episode just to finish it. Um, but yeah, it's very disappointing. So I recommend probably not spending six hours of your life listening to Death in Ice Valley. Um, but if you do have any other recommendations for true crime, mystery, unsolved case kind of podcasts, like I listen to all the big ones, like Someone Knows Something, Case File, kind of over my favourite murder. I don't really listen to it anymore. I'm still in the Facebook groups, but um, I don't really listen to the podcast. Like, um, what other ones? Like, I listen, I've listened to like, most of the Australian ones. So if you have any like weird, obscure true crime podcast recommendations, feel free to pop them down below. And if you want to hear my opinions on any true crime things, feel free to ask me. I probably have some very loud opinions about almost all of them. So, um, yeah. I hope you're all well. Um, the sun is definitely setting. It's definitely a much deeper shade of grey outside and I'm noticing that I'm gradually turning into like a sickly Victorian child in this lighting. So <laughs> I will leave you there. Um, I hope you have a great couple of weeks. I'm trying to try to get back onto like a slightly more structured filming schedule. And yeah, hopefully I will be able to stick to that and I will have some more fun knitting to show you soon. So let me know what you're working on. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns on anything that I've talked about or shown in the podcast, feel free to leave it down below in the comments or hit me up on Instagram or Ravelry. I'm always happy to have a chat and yeah, all the best until I see you again. Yeah, take care. Bye.